Hello everyone, I welcome you to today's uh, lecture. What we discussed uh, last time uh, about uh, IBX based oxidation, iodoxy benzoic acid based oxidations. I hope that you had the chance to uh, go through that and understand what I mentioned in the class where not only we did the oxidation of alcohols to the corresponding carbonyl compounds, but we also discussed how alcohols can be converted to the corresponding enone or dienone and uh, how the uh, uh, mechanisms allow the conversion of uh, ketones to the enone using IPX in a um, involving radical based mechanisms. Now one of the oxidizing agents that we used for converting um, uh, an enone or transposing an enone to the corresponding um, enone with an extra functional group uh, such as this was Dauben rearrangement where we took the, uh, the alcohol and reacted with uh, with PC, uh, PCC. Now that oxidizing agent pyridinium chlorochromate allowed this oxidation of uh, the tertiary alcohol which can be formed from here if we add the corresponding uh, alkyl or aryl group and then we carry out this Dauben rearrangement. So uh, if one also looks at the um, the IBX based reactions. So in 2004, uh, someone uh, uh, reported the con similar type of conversions using IBX uh, in DMSO at 55 degrees temperature. So as one can see that we can have not only PCC but also IBX as a reagent to bring about this dauben mitno rearrangement. Now, as you can anticipate that the intermediate that can be uh, expected to form on this intermediate would be something of this kind. So if one starts with this uh, substrate which is shown above and reacts with uh, IBX that is uh, what you have is something of this kind where you can put the uh, iodo here and uh, oxygen here and of course OH and OH and keep I iodo um, iodine oxygen double bond and OH from the IBX. And what one can expect to form is, is uh, an intermediate of this kind where you have the reagent in this fashion and with an O minus and positive charge. So when this alcohol reacts with this iodine this goes off and what you generate is something of this size type by the loss of water in the from the reaction medium. Now when such a uh, intermediate which is formed you can anticipate that the, uh, the iodine here which is uh, 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 the iodine here which is connected to the O minus which of course we can write as I double bond O or I plus and O minus, then we can anticipate that you, this is 1, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4 and this is 5 and this is 6. So you can anticipate that this oxygen can be attached to this with the double bond movement of this kind 
and of course here something of that type can occur to form the intermediate of this kind where now you have a hydrogen and you have an IR and then you have an O, then you have an I, then of course you have the bulk of the substrate here and oxygen here, oxygen here and this here and at the same time what you will have is, is an O minus coming here which is what is like this. Now this can undergo oxidation, this allows oxidation to take place and one can get the enone here transposed and plus IBA. So it is very similar to what we discussed uh, earlier with pyridinium chlorochromate, but now you have another option of uh, using IBX for the similar type of dauben michno rearrangement to take place. Now we look at other oxidizing agent which is uh, called as uh, a pre reaction and its modification. Now pre reaction uh, gives uh, either trans or the anti, anti or syn alcohols depending on, depending on the condition that one uses or trans or cis alcohols or cis alcohols. Now what is used is uh, the olefin is allowed to react with silver salts of uh, a benzoic acid or acetic acid that means silver benzoate or silver acetate and uh, in the presence of iodine in the in, in, in a reaction uh, where benzene is used as a solvent and what is formed is the dibenzoate which is formed from the olefin which can be hydrolyzed under basic conditions to form the diol. As one can see from here that the benzoate which is here is coming opposite to the other benzoate which is present. That is the reason why this hydroxy group and these hydroxy groups are opposite to each other onto the double bond side. So what is exactly happening is, is silver benzoate interacts with the iodine and polarizes the iodine to form silver iodide and you generate an I plus. This I plus then interacts with the double bond to form an intermediate iodonium ion of this type and of course here in this case you will be losing silver iodide. Now benzoate can attack say on this carbon atom here and this bond breaks the carbon iodine bond breaks and you now have uh, benzoate attack so this the, the, there is an um, inversion of stereochemistry at this center. So the R2 group and R3 groups are pointing upwards and from the lower side benzoate is attacking and now you have iodine going on the top where now the next silver benzoate there should be positive charge here on the silver. Now this interacts with the iodine tries to pull it off at the same time this oxygen lone pair of electrons can attack here and I, by pushing the iodine out which is assisted by the silver salt to form an oxonium ion intermediate of this kind. This of course we can write as a resonance structure with a positive charge either on oxygen or on carbon. Of course you will prefer to write the positive charge on the carbon which is uh, next to the phenyl group and in this case now this symmetrical intermediate then is attacked by the benzoate onto this carbon. Now when this attacks on this carbon now this particular benzoate has come from the opposite side of the 
other benzoid because now this this particular part becomes a benzoid this particular part becomes a benzoid. So now you have a dibenzoid where the two benzoid groups have come from uh, opposite direction and when the hydrolysis and the basic condition is carried out the, uh, the benzoids get oxidized and you get the corresponding diol. So this is where one of the aspects of Prevost reaction which was discovered long back has been used. The one of the disadvantages as you can see is the use of silver salt which is uh, somewhat expensive if the reaction is to be carried out at on large scale. But it is very interesting from the mechanism point of view and now there is some modification which is, which is done and that has been reported by by the famous organic chemist R. B. Woodward at Harvard who found out that if uh, the reaction is carried out uh, in the presence of uh, water. In this case of course uh, the reagent that has been taken is silver acetate but it does not matter. One can also take silver benzoate. Uh, idea here is that you have uh, a source of uh, any carboxylate which eventually gives the hydroxy group. So when the reaction is carried out in the presence of water, uh, what is observed is, uh, is the formation of the cis hydroxy groups that means the two hydroxy groups are coming from the same side. Now if one looks at uh, the mechanism that we discussed uh, uh, without the presence of water uh, you get an intermediate of this kind. Now this intermediate uh, is the one in which we had attacked the benzoid. In this case of course it would be acetate but in the case of benzoid, the benzoid attacks onto this carbon here, in this carbon here and this opens up here from here to here and you get the corresponding uh, trans diacetate or dibenzoate. So we when what we had observed last time was the like this uh, here and of course O C O phenyl and uh, you get N O C O phenyl. So basically we were saying that this part and this part are opposite to each other. So that is the case when the benzoate or, or in this case acetate, you can also have an acetate reacting. So that attacks opposite to uh, on the opposite side. But if we take water as a, as a medium, I mean as a nucleophile present in the medium, then the water now is competing with the acetate or the benzoate moiety and water is small is present in, in a large amount and it attacks onto this particular carbon atom rather than attacking onto this carbon atom. And that is to do with hard soft acid base principle. That is this carbon is a positively charged carbon with two oxygens around and water is harder than the benzoate or acetate where the negative charge is delocalized over the carbonyl group whereas in the water case it is not delocalized. Therefore this is a hard uh, base and this is a hard acid therefore the reaction preferentially re gives this particular uh, OH group attaching onto the carbonyl where there is a phenyl ring. Now this obviously will inter immediately break up and releasing the OH and the benzoate which of course on the hydrolysis will give the OH. Now in the, the two OH groups are on the same side. Uh, obviously here we are writing benzoate because that we are comparing with the previous reaction that we did it but we can also have the acetate as I mentioned here. So in place of uh, this benzoate part here you can have the acetate part also. 
So one gets the diol which is uh, cis diol. So this is a very interesting um, modification that has been uh, introduced by R. B. Woodward. Now if one looks at a complicated um, example such as this uh, which is an intermediate for a steroid type of uh, synthesis. Now if one takes uh, silver acetate and iodine, so obviously uh, since the methyl group is uh, beta oriented, beta oriented the sterically less hindered side will be from the alpha side. Therefore, iodonium ion uh, formation takes place from the alpha side. Now if uh, one then attacks the acetate, now this reaction we are carrying out in the presence of water. So it is since the iodonium ion is formed from the alpha side the attack of the acetate ion would always occur from the beta side and on the less hindered side of the iodonium ion. But it does not really matter eventually because we get anyway the diol. So but the reaction occurs from the beta side that is the reason why what we are getting is an intermediate where this uh, diol would eventually come from the uh, from the beta side because the intermediate that is going to form will be something like this and here you have uh, O, C, O and methyl. So now if uh, this reaction goes further then we will get O which is beta. C then this here O and this. So this is also beta and this is also beta and then of course you will have ethyl group here and the positive charge here. This is what is going to happen. And when this is attacked by the water then of course what we would get is an intermediate of this type where you have an OH here and the methyl here. When this part breaks up in whichever way eventually finally what one you would get is, is OH here and of course OH here. So this is how the reaction is uh, carried out. Now that means if the iodine uh, reacts with silver acetate and the iodonium ion is formed from the alpha side the diol is beta. Now if one carries out the uh, dihydroxylation using osmium tetroxide then similar to the iodonium ion formation osmium tetroxide would also attack from the alpha side because there is a steric hindrance from the beta methyl group. So the osmium tetroxide would make an intermediate of this kind which is from the alpha side and since it is a cyclic intermediate involving both the oxygens of the osmium tetroxide attacking on the double bond from alpha side eventually one would get the um, diol in which both of these uh, hydroxy groups are alpha oriented. So one can see that, that the difference between the two of them is eventually the outcome of the diol's uh, stereochemistry. So this kind of application has been very well utilized in the uh, reaction of pre type. Now there are disadvantages as I mentioned that you use two uh, moles of silver salt and one mole of iodine. It is something which is uh, not very um, good because if one carries out the reaction on a large scale then you have uh, this as expensive protocol. So this, these protocols involving uh, silver salt and iodine are expensive. So uh, what has been recently uh, reported in the 2005 is you, you take uh, lithium bromide as a uh, in a catalytic amount as a source of Br minus and lithium plus 
and uh, this uh, can be reacted with uh, one mole equivalent of an oxidizing agent which is phenyl iododiacetate. Now this phenyl iododiacetate oxidizes the uh, Br minus to Br plus and then of course that Br plus and the Br minus will eventually become a bromine. So now this molecular bromine uh, in the process of course you use you get iodobenzene and lithium acetate from the oxidizing agent which is phenyl iododiacetate. So basically what you have done is you have oxidized the Br minus the bromide ion to the corresponding molecular bromine which then reacts with the olefin in a, in a similar fashion as the iodine was uh, reacted with the uh, double bond in the pre washed reaction where silver salts of the uh, benzoate or um, silver benzoic acid or acetic acid was used as silver salt. So when this bromonium ion is formed uh, you we will get of course the um, attack of the double bond uh, onto the Br plus taking place exactly in an identical fashion as uh, iodine uh, type of uh, reaction. And then when the uh, uh, attack of the acetic acid or uh, in this case uh, acetate or acetic acid occurs then one can imagine that the nucleophile coming from the beta side and this particular bond breaking from uh, the lower side and therefore the acetate and the uh, bromine, the acetate and the bromine would be opposite to each other. Or it is very clear that this is what exactly will happen uh, similar to the pre type of reaction. Now obviously you have the acetate which is uh, now going to react it from the opposite side in the presence of uh, uh, this uh, bromine leaving group in the form of bromide and you generate a similar intermediate to the pre type of uh, intermediate. Now uh, it is very clear that the acetic acid or acetate ion would now attack from the opposite side and then you get an antidiol or antidiacetate which can be hydrolyzed to, to the corresponding antidiol. But if water is added uh, like uh, Woodward's modification then this is the intermediate that can be attacked by the water and, and then you have a similar situation as uh, Woodward's case and you can get the cis, cis diol or syndiol that will form when water is added. So it is exactly similar to the pre reaction. The only difference is that in place of uh, uh, iodine uh, as a molecular iodine and silver salt of the benzoate what one is using is basically nothing but lithium bromide in a catalytic fashion. Now as you can see from here when, when, the, when the reaction takes place you have a bromide ion coming from here there is also bromide ion coming from here. So you have two of the bromide ions which have come out of the reaction medium and the acetic acid or acetate they react and then of course you generate the intermediates which are diacetates or, or uh, either in anti form or a syn form. But this bromide ions then are reoxidized by the same oxidizing agent which is phenyl HIOAC twice and you regenerate the bromine here. So you do not have to use molecular bromine uh, uh, and you can take the corresponding lithium bromide and then carry out by reacting with phenyl iododiacetate as, as an oxidizing agent to form uh, the corresponding syn or anti diacetate. So this is a very interesting modification and new modification and relatively cheap modification. Now we have another reagent which is called as uh, Fetizon's reagent which exploits the utility of uh, silver carbonate uh, 
uh, which is uh, essentially adsorbed on the surface of sea light. And uh, although uh, this allows the oxidation of primary, secondary alcohols both, but it is more selective for the oxidation of secondary and allylic oxidations or in other words the secondary and allylic, alcohol, allylic alcohols are preferentially oxidized over primary if the substrate has such uh, uh, both the kind of alcohols which are present. Now fetizone oxidation involves oxidation of primary and secondary alcohols uh, utilizing the compound silver carbonate which is adsorbed on the surface of sea light. Basically sea light is nothing but diatomaceous earth also known as Kieselgar uh, is a naturally occurring soft siliceous uh, sedimentary rock. So basically it is a fine powder white color powder which has mainly uh, uh, SiO2 as the chemical present however it allows adsorption of different kinds of chemicals on its surface. It is known as Fetizone's reagent because it was first employed by Fetizone in 1968. It is a mild reagent suitable for both acid sensitive and base sensitive compounds and uh, it is specifically uh, reactive with lactols to obtain lactones. The, now this is something that we will discuss from diols, not from a diols, from diols. Uh, it is the obviously it is an expensive reagent because it is a silver salt which has to be utilized. However, it has lot of advantages one as, as I have mentioned above it has a selectivity in terms of uh, secondary and allylic alcohols are oxidized faster than primary. The, the diols can be interestingly oxidized to the corresponding lactones. The only uh, disadvantage or one of the disadvantages of this reaction is that it, uh, uh, it can uh, be utilized uh, but if there are polar groups present on the substrate then there is a problem because the uh, those polar groups can have a competition with the silver carbonate uh, for the alcohol adsorption because ultimately silver carbonate which is adsorbed on the surface of sea light uh, interacts with the hydroxy group of the alcohol. But if there are other polar groups which are present uh, in the reaction medium or uh, in, on the substrate then there is a competition. Now there is also a possibility of a steric hindrance of the alpha hydrogen that means the alcohol which is getting oxidized that alcohol if it has the hydrogen which is sterically hindered kind of oxygen hydrogen then there is a possibility of a uh, rate slowing down because of the steric hindrance that is uh, exhibited by that particular substrate. So in case the reaction uh, is carried out in a solvent which is uh, polar then also there is a problem. Now I just want to show one or two examples here for example if this uh, allylic alcohol can be oxidized to the corresponding enone. This uh, uh, allylic alcohol can be converted to the corresponding alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde and as I mentioned that you can take a diol of uh, this type and uh, it is a symmetrical diol. So you get only one uh, particular lactone and then if you have this diol which is not a symmetrical diol but then as you can see the difference there is an allylic alcohol here and this is a non-allylic alcohol here. So this particular uh, double uh, the OH group gets oxidized to the corresponding aldehyde which is in equilibrium with um, this uh, lactol and this lactol then 
is again allylic alcohol and it gets oxidized to the corresponding lactone. So this is how the lactone has formed. So one can go to the diol uh, to the lactone in, in two different ways as it is seen. One diol which is a symmetrical diol which does not have uh, allylic uh, alcohol but then this is allylic alcohol. So allylic alcohol is oxidized uh, faster than the uh, non-allylic alcohol and that allows uh, the lactone formation in a very uh, regioselective fashion. So these are the examples which indicate the utility of uh, silver carbonate on silite which is called Fetizon's reagent. So I will stop it today at this stage and uh, take uh, up the further aspects of this Fetizon's reagent in my next class. In the meanwhile you can go through these uh, oxidations which I discussed uh, just now both uh, the Prevost reaction as well as the silver carbonate based reaction and prior to that I discussed the IBX based uh, Daubner, um, Daubin uh, Mishno reaction or rearrangement and you can uh, carefully look at the mechanistic aspects and application of those reagents in organic synthesis and uh, then we will look at further aspects of these in the next class. Uh, thank you.